It's Tuesday, January 30th, and I'm your host, Sarah Beal. On today's show, we talk with Assistant Director of Senior Services, Donna Burns, about some great caregiver programs. Then I had the chance to sit down with Airport Manager, Bud Brielle, in the new Cape Cod Coffee Cafe at the airport. And finally, we meet Matt Kohler and Danny Price of the New Classics Company, the Geyer Barnes Resident Improv and Theater Group. But first, let's get a look at today's top headlines. The Barnesville School Committee will be hosting a workshop to this week, Wednesday, January 31st at 7 p.m. The school committee workshop will focus on the Barnesville Public Schools Master Field Plan. The workshop will be held at the Barnesville Intermediate School in the second floor library. A note from the Assessor's Department, FY 2018 abatement applications are due in the Assessor's Office by this Thursday, February 1st. FY 2018 statutory exemption applications, including, including residential exemptions, are due in the assessor, Assessor's Office by Monday, April 2nd. More information can be found online at www.townofbarnesville.us on the Assessor's Office page. The Town of Barnesville is currently accepting applications for artists and artisans interested in participating in the 2018 Hyannis High Arts Cultural District Artist Shanty Program. Artist shanties are located in the Hyannis High Arts Cultural District at Bismore Park and new this season, three additional shanties along the walkway to the sea overlooking Asselton Park. Artists will be juried as applications are received and applications are accepted on a rolling basis for remaining spots for the 2018 season. Spots are filled based on need and availability. Applications can be found on artsbarnstable.com. Coming up next, Assistant Director of Senior Services, Donna Burns. Donna, thank you so much for joining us today. We have a couple of caregiver programs that we want to talk about today. Um, I know you do a lot at the Senior Center for Caregivers. The first program we're going to talk about is the Savvy Caregiver Program. What can you tell us about this program? Well, the Savvy Caregiver Program is an evidence-supported program that actually uh, myself and another um, staff member, Stacy Cullen, actually received um, some in-depth training to be facilitators for this program. It's a free six-session training program for family and friends who are active caregivers now caring for someone with Alzheimer's or another related dementia diagnosis. It's wonderful that you're offering a program because I feel like it's one of those diagnoses. My mom worked in, with Alzheimer's patients for a majority of her uh, nursing career and it's one of those diagnoses that you kind of feel it's very overwhelming and you can almost feel kind of lost with what to do. That's such a good point, Sarah. Mm -hmm. You know, no one signs up for this, you know, either person, certainly. And it's a difficult, difficult road to hoe, um, taking care of a person living with Alzheimer's or, or related dementia. Mm -hmm. um, you really need specialized skills, knowledge, and to find a way to, to be able to manage the roller coaster of emotions and challenges that, that you'll face on um, during that time that you're caring for someone. And that's the wonderful thing about this program is it meets the folks who are the new caregivers where they are, and our goal is help them to understand, first of all, the disease process, because very often you get the diagnosis, but no one sits down and maps it out for you about what you can expect and how this is going to to uh, impact your life and the person you're caring for and how to manage your life, sort of take control of it the best you can, to learn how to reach out for help and family resources and to learn about, you know, community resources that can help you uh, to manage all of the uh, challenges you have and, most importantly, how to make time to take care of yourself. Which is so important. That's a, you know, you can't take care of someone if you're not taking care of yourself. It's, it's true. I, I, and it's so hard, you know, when you have such demands on you and you want to do the best for your person. But I try to remind the caregivers that it's the old, it's the old example. You know, if, if you're on a plane and the oxygen masks fall, fall down and the, you're, first response is to, to put it on the person next to you, but actually you need to do it for yourself so that you're in a healthy place to, to take care of the person that you need to. Exactly. So when is this going to be held and where can people sign up in advance? 
It's going to be held for six consecutive Wednesdays, January 24th to the 28th, from 10 a.m. to noon at the Barnstable Senior Center. And I do want to tell folks, because I know it's tough making all of the meetings, if you can't commit to all six, but you know you can come out, come to four or five of them, that's fine. You know, it's totally free. We're not here to add to your stress. We're here to help you manage your stress and to give you some really helpful um, tips and resources that will make this uh, a a bit easier for you. Wonderful. So hopefully, you know, I know it is starting this week, but hopefully that there's people out there that can can sign up, you know, and, and, and take part in this. And if they miss like the first week, like you said, you know, you know, come to what you can. It's important to, to have the right resources and, and the right information that you need in order to be a caregiver to someone with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Absolutely. Wonderful. The other program we want to talk about is you're going to start a walking program for caregivers, which I think is just such a great idea because it's, it's part of that taking care of yourself. Absolutely. Portion. There is so much it's actually a tremendous amount of research that exists right now that uh, proves that uh, family members who provide care for someone with a chronic or disabling condition like Alzheimer's or related uh, dementia are themselves at risk. They tend to not take care of their own uh, physical, emotional, and mental health well-being because they're giving everything and the strain of this 24-7 caring for a frail or disabled uh, person is takes quite a toll on people. Mm -hmm. So you're going to start this walking program. It's going to take start in in March so we're giving everybody a little heads up about when it's going to start so everyone can prepare for it. Um, but, and you're also going to offer, it's going to start in March, it's going to run from 11 to noon, and you're going to offer uh, respite. We sure are, because it's, you know, so for many people, they are no longer able to leave the person they're caring for mm-hmm. safely at home, and it, their doctor, their friends, everyone will say, you have to do something for yourself. And their response is, how? Yeah. Well, we're partnering with the Hyannis Youth and Community Center to to make it easier for them to have an opportunity to bring the person that they're caring for who will be um, engaged in some activities while they just go and put on their walking shoes, get out on the beautiful indoor track at the Hyannis Youth and Community Center, and they can meet other caregivers if they would like to talk to someone while they're walking, you know, who can understand their challenges. Or if they just want to walk by themselves and have their quiet time, they can know that their person is, um, under, you know, engaged in a great activity and right there on site at the com- community center. So we're really grateful that the, the Barnstable Senior Center and the HYCC were able to, to put our heads together and find a way to provide this free program for caregivers in our pro- uh, community. That's wonderful. And what a great partnership between you and the HYCC because it is what it is. It's the community center. So a- Absolutely. The one caveat that I would would definitely like to mention is if you are going to be bringing your person with you so that you can take part in this program, you do have to call me before um, just to do uh, a registration for the person so that I can keep an an idea about how many people are coming. Mm -hmm. And again, this is for um, caregivers of folks with uh, dementia or or some other um, or an Alzheimer's diagnosis. So there are many caregivers of people of all ages, but this is geared towards people that are taking care of uh, an older adult. Wonderful. Thank you, Donna, so much for telling about both of these wonderful programs you're offering through the Senior Center. I really appreciate it and look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you. And if I may, I'd oh, like sure. to, to put my phone number out there. Oh, if definitely. I may. Yep. Please call me, Donna Burns, at 508 508- Eight six two four seven five three. And if you're a caregiver in the community that needs any type of help, please call us here at the Barnstable Senior Center. That's what we're here for. Perfect. Thank you so much, Donna. Thank you, Sarah. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.
My guest today is Donna Byrne. She's the Assistant Director of Senior Services here in the town of Barnstable. Coming up, we'll learn about the new classes company, but first, Airport Manager Bud Briel. But thank you so much for joining us today. We're in the beautiful Cape Cod Coffee Cafe here at the airport. They just opened about last month. Mm -hmm. um, how has it been going? Uh, I think it's been going fairly well for given you know uh, you're building a new business. Mm -hmm. uh, so every every week we see some new things happening here. Uh, last week they just started uh, offering a full menu, uh, breakfast, lunch, and uh, yeah, take home, take out. What do they call it? Grab and go. Yep. Uh, so in, in a few moments, I was hoping you might be able to speak to uh, their marketing manager and uh, Steve and a little bit, little bit more detail about what's happening here at the cafe, but we're so glad that they're here. Yeah. And uh, I think things are looking really good for the future. That's wonderful. It's, it's uh, nice to you know, know that you can come down and get a good cup of coffee if you're, yeah, if you're and, wanting and, one. And if you know about them, they're going to be starting to make their own donuts here, which are very famous in the Mashpee area. Uh, if they're anything like the donuts they had at their opening. Those are the same ones. And, it'll uh, be well worth it to come out here to try them. Exactly. They were so good. Right. <laughs> I highly enjoyed them. I think I had too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah, so good. Uh, we also want to talk about, um, you know, we've had some extreme weather lately. We had a you know, pretty good storm last week. We didn't get a lot of snow, mm -hmm. but it did bring a lot of ice. Um, how did that kind of affect the airport? Well, the airport is, is taxed by the FAA to remain open 24 hours a day, uh, so weather permitting. Mm -hmm. uh, so our task when we get snow or ice is to try to maintain a minimum of one runway, one taxiway, and the ramp open for business. Now we're open that doesn't necessarily mean that the airlines are open or anybody else so during the height of the storm uh one, one day i believe it was last thursday no one was flying mm -hmm. uh, but we were working to keep the airport open and stay ahead of the weather if we can and we did and uh but uh the winds were just too bad i mean we had hurricane force winds at 75 miles an hour here mm -hmm. so unfortunately we had no damage here at the airport but and the other thing that's been affecting it is the icing that you're getting and uh, the extreme cold temperatures have been affecting uh, ice in the harbors in both Nantucket and, and, and in Hyannis. And because of that, the high-speed ferries were unable to run. And then that's when they come, uh, the passengers come up here to the airport to try to seek seats on planes to get over to Nantucket. Oh, what I've been talking about for a long while is, is this concept of the uh, lifeline to the islands is that that involves all modes of transportation to the islands and so that you can't treat one to the detriment of the other and which is I think what we've seen a little bit of that in the recent years in the advent of the high-speed ferries which are great it's a wonderful method to get to the islands uh, it's cheaper for the individuals but you can't do that to the point where you you put airlines out of business and so uh, that's had a negative effect on our ability here at the airport not only to generate revenues but also to provide services in an emergency situation as you know about two years ago island airlines went bankrupt part of the reason was that they lost business and when island airlines went, went uh, bankrupt we lost 50,000 passengers a year to the ferries 10 years ago when uh, I started here we had emplanements which are passengers departing the airport in the amount of about 200,000 a year uh, last year it was 35,000 so we're down to 35,000 employments now and we're trying to bring that back up by new airlines, new bringing in air, large air carriers like JetBlue and maybe others. And uh, there's this, that's been a boon to charter flights, but it's been a huge boon to this ferry system. But going back to what I was talking about earlier is that when the harbors are silt in or the harbors are iced in or there's high winds and the ferries can't run, when people want to get to the islands, you come up here to the airport, and now because of the reductions, we don't have the planes. Right. And we can't provide the service to the degree that we used to. And it's also included in there as a pilot shortage going on right now and that type of thing. Uh, but you have to treat us a little bit better in that overall plan for transportation for the area mm -hmm. uh, so that we can indeed continue to provide that lifeline to the islands. Right. It's important. It's important for people getting to the island. And it's important for the people that live on the islands to be able to get off when they need exactly. to. Exactly. You know, if, like you said, it could be wind, it could be ice, you know, a ferry could go down. There's still our residents over there that need to get to what, you know, the exactly. mainland. So it's important. So um, is there any, you know, are you taking suggestions maybe if people have ideas for or uh, 
if uh, uh, the airline is interested in coming here, how, how does that all work? Yeah, we're, we're putting together right now a marketing plan and we're working with mass, de mass uh, de development folks with the town business uh, section and uh, we're looking for any type of business that would work here at the airport. Um, because of the, the uh, reduction in aviation business, we're looking for other things that are non-aviation to be able to expand here at the airport, hopefully with an aviation component, but if not, then we're looking at other things as well. Anything we can do to try to uh, diversify our revenues so that we can continue to support the airport. Uh, FAA requires us to be self-sufficient uh, uh, and then however we can get there. Um, you know, as you may or may not know, the airport owns the land where the Kmart Plaza is. We own a lot of land in the area and we want to develop it. So if somebody's out there that well, has a good idea, mm -hmm. would like to come talk to us, we'd love to hear them. Wonderful. And another thing that I've been talking with about with a lot of people is it's coming into budget season. Yes. This is going to be your last budget yes. as you are retiring. It's at some point this year. Um, how is, I know that we've had to modify the budget already. Um, how are things looking? Uh, they're not looking that great at the yeah. moment. As you know, we've uh, had to reduce our budget. We're down now about $2 million less than we were two years ago. Uh, this year I've had to, uh, for the first time, use our reserves to help balance the budget. And then um, I had to go back in and reduce the budget even further uh, because uh, as an enterprise fund, we're not supposed to budget for more than the revenues that we generate. Right. And our revenues, when they were certified this year, came in lower than what we'd used for the budget uh, for 2018. So we had to modify our budget even again. Mm -hmm. So now we're in the process of putting together our budget for 2019 and uh, it's probably about the same or, le or less. Um, we're also uh, looking at our capital plan, which as you know, over the last 10 years, we probably put $100 million or more of improvements here at the airport. Uh, we can't do that anymore. Uh, we're gonna have to be very slow and careful. Uh, we also are heavily dependent on the FAA and Mass DOT uh, for funding for our capital projects. So we talk to them first, find out what kind of monies are available, and we try to plug that into our, our capital project plan, and then we have to modify it based on the amount of money that we have available for our share. Mm -hmm. Even though we're only paying 5% of our share, 5% is a lot of money on some projects. 5% yeah. of a $10 million project is a lot of money. Yep. Uh, so that affects our budget. And so we're having now to look at modifying our capital plan because of that. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it all kind of works out. Hopefully, we'll get an uptick in business soon. And that would be will, awesome. Things will be looking more on the bright side. Cape Cod Coffee could go boom and we'd maybe make a few bucks. Wonderful. That'd be great. <laughs> thank you so much, Bud, for chatting with us today. Appreciate I really it. Thank you, Sarah. It. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. I'm very excited that Cape Cod Coffee is now at the airport. I love coffee. So I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited that you guys have the coffee parking outside, too. Oh, we are, too. It's yeah. uh, nice to be able to, and the airport was very nice to let us have uh, customer parking out there. Uh, the gates open up as soon as we um, get here, and so people can just zip on in, get their coffee, and leave, and yeah. zip on out. So that's great. It's right in the employee parking, which is right next to where we are in the Cape Cod Airport, I mean, the Cape Cod Coffee Cafe. Yes. Um, what kind of items can people find when they come here? This is just like our other locations. Uh, we have over 25 different types of coffee that you can buy, uh, retail bags of um, a pound. We also have breakfast sandwiches, which we just started this past week. We have lunches of soup, salads, and sandwiches like turkey and cheese and ham and cheese. Uh, of course, we have everything that uh, the coffee houses have, like um, croissants and bagels and muffins, um, a bunch of stuff. We have merchandise here. We're about to get freshly made donuts starting in a couple weeks uh, that will be made here every morning. So if you want hot donuts, this is the place to go. That's wonderful. What are your hours and what days are you open? We're open every day of the week from 5.30 to 1.00. Um, it's something so we can get the early risers and be able to get the lunch crowd as well. That's wonderful. Well, uh, hopefully people will come out and check out Cape Cod Coffee here at the Airport Cafe. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure. I really appreciate sure, it. Sure, no, thanks for coming out. Started. Uh, New Classic started in uh, 2013. Um, for a very long time, myself and my two friends from college, Justin and Brett, Justin Gray and Brett Burkhart, uh, we'd always talked about starting our own theater company. And um, 
uh, we came up with the idea. We wanted to, it was sort of a selfish thing between the three of us. We just wanted to put on a show together. Uh, we missed each other and we wanted to put on a show. So we, uh, we just came up with this name, New Classics Company, and uh, picked out a show, The Complete Works of William Shakespeare Abridged. Uh, and we set out to do that. So they came down to the Cape in August of 2013. And in two weeks we rehearsed and put on the show the following weekend. And then they came back two weeks later and we did a couple more shows. And by the end of that run, we had really uh, fell in love with the characters we had made for that play. So we decided to write another show and we told ourselves next summer we're going to, we're going to do it all again. We're going to do another show. It became more of a realized entity that winter of 2014 when I met with Lisa Cavanaugh, who's the coordinator here at the Geyer Barn. And uh, she had, was basically pitching to me using the barn as a performance space. Um, and uh, I immediately jumped at the idea because like we do in improv, um, I usually just say, yes, and, and then we move on. Um, so I immediately said yes, and then and then I thought about the repercussions of saying yes, um, and realized we had a lot of work to do. Um, but moving forward, we got to that summer of 2014, and we ended up putting in seven weeks. We were in residence here, and we ended up putting on three full uh, play productions, including that sequel to our Complete Works of Shakespeare show, which ended up being uh, I've got a bad feeling about this a tribute to George Lucas. Uh, which was a lot of fun. And then from there, it's kind of become, it's, we've sort of solidified into a, a, a core group of people um, putting on these productions in the summertime. And then out of the summertime residency, uh, improv sort of has spiked off from that. And now we do, we're here all the time. After Georgie's Full Swing opened, we said, let's do an improv show. So one of the Fridays after, the show got out, we had the audience, we invited them to stay and we did an improv show. And it went really well, surprisingly. Um, and we had a lot of fun, everyone else had a lot of fun, so then a couple weeks later we tried another one, a couple weeks after that we tried another improv show, and then we all kind of felt really good about it. And we were like, we should do more of that next summer. So then the next summer, the very first Friday of our residency in the, here in the barn, we did an improv show. and then. It was basically decided that, hey, we're going to do an improv show the rest of the summer every Friday. Um, and then as we were doing that, we started picking up people who were coming to the shows and actors from other productions we were doing here in the barn and saying, hey, you should come to improv rehearsal. Hey, you would probably be good at that. Um, and then by the end of the summer, we had this core group of people who were very into it. And then the summer ended and everyone who had been doing improv didn't want to stop. So it just kind of took off from there. I remember Lisa and Melissa came to the, sh the, the show that night and they were like, we've never seen this many people in the barn before. Um, so that really put us in the good graces with the town. Uh, and from there, it's, we've been doing our best to try to uh, keep that relationship great because they, they, they treat us very, very well and uh, we appreciate everything that the town has done to let us use this space and. Uh, really call it our home. Improv is just short for improvisation. You know, it's just spontaneous creativity. Um, which is, can be a lot of fun when you channel it into games and exercises as a team. So It can be defined a lot of different ways, I guess. But um, what we do here is we essentially play games uh, and make up scenes off the tops of our head. Uh, we, on Friday nights, we take audience suggestions based on prompts given from a host, and our players will step forward and play a game um, based off those prompts. And all the games have different rules and different formulas. Um, some people might recognize them from a program like Whose Line Is It Anyway? Um, but there are a lot of games that we've made up uh, in-house that I'm actually pretty proud of, of quite a few of our our own original ideas that um, keep everything fresh and, and new because that's really the challenge is, is making up something over and over again but every time making it different and exciting uh, and funny hopefully. Uh, as you can see, uh, I was 
throughout the wetlands, there is a deep rumbling of a lower, <laughs> uh, a low pressure system. I got involved through free workshops that New Classics was offering, uh, specifically improv workshops. Um, I came in, uh, played a bit, and they said, hey, you should start coming to our Tuesday night rehearsals. So I did, and um, after some time, uh, there was kind of a, a just not really a, a gap, but a, a need for someone to kind of step up and start really running the rehearsals and the Friday night shows, and I just kind of fell naturally into it. Uh, never quite knowing what's going to happen. Um, just that kind of anxious feeling that at first is scary, but after a while starts to become comfortable and familiar. Uh, and you, you go out there and you get a suggestion. You have no idea what it's going to be. And anything that you thought you were going to do or ideas you had just go out of your mind. And you just start fresh every time, every scene. So that's exciting. And, um, challenging yourself to, to do something different and not fall into old patterns but explore new ideas every time is that's that's what I love that's what keeps me coming back so. we have people that do a really great job of just constantly surprising you with how funny they can be and the new hats they can wear every time so. our shows are family friendly um, we really strive uh, to, you know, and I emphasize greatly, you know, we want to get to the heart of what makes everybody laugh. Just being constantly surprised by the humor and intelligence of people. Um, there is some moments where you think you've seen it all and someone just blows your mind and you just, you just laugh and just that feeling of being able to come in here and escape from the craziness of everything else outside the barn and um, and laugh with some really talented people that's that's what's great about it thank you for joining us today we'll be back tomorrow with an all-new show on Wednesday show we'll talk with chief of police Paul McDonald town clerk and quirk and DPW director Dan Santos for Barnstable today I'm Sarah Beal Thank you.